Hi there everyone, it's Jakko here. I wanted to show you guys how I created this PBR texture for this rock model here. I modeled this in ZBrush just using uh, high poly sculpting and then uh, created low poly using Z remesher there and baked in some normal map and also some displacement map in there and and then I just uh, brought these guys to Substance Designer. So it looks pretty nice. I like that uh, it's partially appears wet and you know some people might say that okay how realistic is that and and so on but but we got the in PBR we can do so many things and we get to take advantage of the higher specular range of uh, of for example in this case the roughness map so so these we can see that we have a, a non-uniform uh, roughness going on here so some of the parts are are uh, appear glossy and the other parts are, are less uh, glossy and we can do all kinds of things with this so uh, it's pretty simple texture but uh, anyway I'd like to show you the techniques what I used to create this. So our graph here is, is not too bad it's uh, it's still like it looks pretty new nudely here like you can see the triplanar nodes which are always by nature a little bit messy and I'm gonna get to that uh, in detail how we can take advantage to these. So I got uh, basically the input maps here. So these two guys are maps which I created in uh, Substance Designer using the baking tools and then these are the maps that I brought in from ZBrush. So normal map and a displacement map, actually 32-bit floating point uh, displacement map which I'm then driving and adding some effects here using that as a base. So then I've got uh, these and then I'm just blending everything. So so again, in Substance Designer, everything is just basically you use the blend nodes to, to blend different effects together. And it's sort of like a layer system. So those who are new to Substance Designer, it may look a little bit scary because you know you have these noodles and everything looks so technical and uh, mechanical and, and difficult if you are not uh, into node-based workflows. So, uh, but, but it's really, easy to learn and when you get learn this you get a huge power to to take advantage of them so again this isn't like really super optimized for the games also real time uh, real time applications uh, so that this is more like i'm just wanting to use uh, substance designer to texture this asset and then output some maps and be done with it but but the real power of this is of course if you want to make a serialized asset so if i make this once and then say I'm gonna change the model or create a whole bunch of rocks. I can do that and I can just input the, the guys in here and bake some maps in here and throw it in and with a couple of minutes create a new set of textures which are all completely seamless and which all completely fit that particular model. So, so it's really great to have uh, these substances around. So here we have our albedo and it doesn't look uh, too complicated. You might be wondering that what are those distorted areas there, but they are just a sort of an effect which is come from triplanar projections. So I'm gonna get to that in a minute. So albedo looks basically pretty simple. You can see some details like the worn out corners here. Um, you can see those guys in there, and just this little bit of this um, detail, which all comes from actually mostly from the normal map. So, and then we have our normal map in here. It's a bit. Uh, could be a bit noisy but I wanted to add a little bit of that rock um, that little, little service detail in there uh, using just uh, these nodes here and so I'm just taking the original and blending in in this uh, this thing in here using the height to normal node oh, I'm sorry height to normal blend right and yeah so this is the normal and then we have our roughness and roughness looks about this so again uh, dark areas appear uh, less rough and then uh, the white areas appear more rough so so in that case uh, it's like a, a flipped uh, glossiness map basically so that the uh, glossiness uh, details but inverted and then i've got the metalness which is completely back because obviously our rock is not made of metal so what i'm doing here is that i basically start by this BMW spots in here and this is a really useful and very versatile tool so I kind of like this it looks like a rock already a little bit so what I then did I used this gradient map in here and the way how I did this was really fun actually I took this picture just from from the internet and I took the gradient map and used gradient editor and pick gradient and then just drag around here to get this kind of thing 
and then by effect uh, what we got is uh, something like that uh, maybe we can try again uh, pick another gradient um, I'm gonna do that and uh, maybe just do something like that so it's really fun way because you can just like try different ways and try to, to see what what looks good so we got a little bit different result this time and i kind of like this it looks uh doesn't look too bad it looks actually even better than the original so let's keep that so this pick gradient is a great way to to pick some values from uh from uh, images basically and then what we got now is this and this is really great so instead of using this image we can uh, map some values to our monochrome uh, uh, procedural texture so automatically what what we got is a tiling tiling texture here and and it's more it's much more nicer to do it this way so that we don't get any any sort of uh, ambient occlusion effects or any kind of things from images so I prefer to really not use uh, images so then I just input this to triplane anode and if you haven't heard of triplane anodes they are a new feature in substance designer I think they come like uh, maybe substance Designer five introduced them if I remember right and these are really good because they allow the projection of texture to the 3D model itself. So, so what this does is it just maps it so that uh, we don't get any UV seams. So it's a great way to eliminate UV seams from the texture. Basically, it's it's really I'm loving this. And the only problem what I have it is it gets a little bit messy when you do that because you want to use your um, uh, source textures multiple times and then just input them to here so that if you have multiple of these then you know it gets like noodle soup with pretty quickly but but anyway so what i done here is that i could i took my position map which i baked and i just input it here and then i took my word space normal map and, and input it there and there's something that you need to pay attention when you are baking these for to be used in uh triplanar projection because uh, if we go here and bake model information we can see that we have our position here and we need to use B-sphere normalization. Uh, we, if you use the box it doesn't work so B-sphere is... Uh, we need to use that in order to get a proper position map to be used with Triplanar nodes. So I've done that and then I've just basically just uh, kind of checked the settings. I didn't actually do anything to the settings, they are just the default settings. But if you want you can always adjust the tiling. So if you want to maybe make a different scale model or something you can use the tiling and then it uh, projects it in, in sort of uh, uh, in real time and you can even see the effect in your model pretty soon uh, so as you can see we probably so as, yeah we, we got now a uh, smaller dots here and it's pretty nice so yeah you can adjust the tiling I'm just gonna drop it back to the one so so we don't get confused so yes uh, this is uh, the one in here and then I used also another triplanar node for uh, I think I did what was this um, Oh yeah, this was for the rough uh, roughness channel. So I, so I did again do that. So I basically did um, this crunch map in here, and I used triplanar projection to project it to a roughness in there. So then, uh, what this produces it produces this kind of a result. And then I uh, blended it again uh, from here. So what what's going on in this area here is that. I took a normal, uh, our normal map, which is from the ZBrush, and then um, I did curvature. I, I used the curvature node to convert it into a curvature. So what this does again, it you need to make sure that you uh, are selecting the right normal format. So in my case, my normal map was OpenGL format. So I did that, and then uh, adjust the intensity. So so you can adjust the intensity of your curvature map here, which is really nice and. And I like this often more than the one that I can bake because we can also bake those curvature maps and, and they are just basically baked from the low poly if you if you don't have any uh, high poly in your uh, workflow. So so in my case, um, I didn't have high poly here, so I only had the low poly for the, which I started with. So I did this curvature map in here, but, but this isn't really... Uh, I'm not sure how useful this can be. It could be, we could probably blend this in and make, maybe make some larger sort of uh, areas in here but i'm not really into this so i really like to make make curvature maps from the normal maps in, uh, here in substance designer because we can do that and then what i what i did then was that i took my uh displacement map and i'm sort of filtering this in here and and what i use, just blurred this a little bit and then use levels adjustment to this to 
sort of punching in more of these details in here and then I'm blending that in there to add a little bit of this um, uh, corner effect in here. And then again I use gradient map just to convert this monochrome into a color image and then I had levels in here just to again adjust it make make it more uh, strong and and then blended that into uh, our uh, uh, albedo map in here. <clears throat> and then again use some uh, levels adjustments to to darken it up and that's the final one. So yes, uh, then we have our uh, normal map. So again, in normal map isn't like too complicated. I'm just taking a height normal blend in here and and blending in some details from uh, from actually from the albedo channel here. Just make a monochrome grayscale conversion here. Add a little bit blurriness to it so uh, we don't uh, get too noisy. And so basically, what I did here is uh, I inverted it I, just by dragging these sliders, you know. Uh, across so it's a nice way you can save yourself uh, uh, often one node by doing that in doing the inversion this way so then I got the roughness so roughness again is it starts by this uh, uniform coloring here which is um, could be a, a one base for our roughness and then I blended in um, the result from project projection here and get this and and then again blend it in these details from from here so we get more uh, more this uh, kind of uh, effect going on in here and then again use levels adjustments to to punch it up a little bit and then this final one and then we have our black metallic texture so nothing too complicated as you can see uh, it's pretty simple thing but again the great thing is that once we've done this when we have this uh, we can just apply this to our new models or new assets anytime and basically we have our rock uh, rock substance uh, ready to go anytime so yeah so I like to check my PBR values by using these different environment maps so the one of the biggest uh, features of PBR or bi biggest benefits of PBR is the ability that we can create uh, textures which will look good in all lighting conditions so we don't need to make specific textures for specific light lighting conditions anymore because these are sort of a universal sort of a data what we will feed into the shader so so if we take a look at just dragging different environments here we can get the idea how they would look if they are placed here and I think this looks pretty good it seems pretty believable to me so even in here it, it makes sense that this rock could be could look uh, acceptable here or maybe they so it's a great way to quickly see how the values will perform in different lighting conditions. So this was it. I hope you enjoyed my little uh, rock uh, texturing tutorial here. Uh, please subscribe. I hope to see you soon. This was Siakko. Bye bye.